it. Yes. Are Next you excited for I'm today? Yes, I'm very excited. I'm, I Welcome back, by the way. We Thank missed you. you last week. Thank you. I missed you guys last week. Roscoe's, I missed you guys a lot. Yeah. Even I was, I was in Hawaii. Hawaii. Um, <laughs> working, Hawaii. not vacation. It was work. It was work. No, uh, that bitch was <laughs> looking at whales and shit, honey. <laughs> I was, Don't let her I fool was. you. Well, All let's right, get this started and bring out our guests. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage. Uh, she's one of our very good friends. It's not her first time here. Please welcome Raja O'Hara! Yes! What up, Raskos? How y'all feeling tonight? Hey, boo! Yes. One of my favorite people ever. All right, have a seat, my love. No, no, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Uh, we we, we got to get this shit started, though, because remember, it starts, you know, live and stuff, so we don't have time. Uh, Valentina is, of course, late. No. No, she's here. She's just... She she actually made it on time, but they, they're, she's tweaking the look a little second. She'll be here any minute. Um, so we're going to get this started in the meantime, because... It's 7 o'clock. Yes. Previously, Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Before we get started, uh, hello to YouTube. Yes, hello, uh, hello. YouTube. If you haven't pushed that subscribe button, go ahead and do so. Subscribe. And then, okay, we have, let's give it up one more time for Valentina and Raja O'Hara. <laughs> awesome. How are you, ladies? Girl, I'm so good. I can't complain. Now, are you cold? Because you come from Texas, yes? Well, it was a uh, freeze everywhere, so it's been chilly everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you're experiencing winter, yes? You've, you've, you've handled it before, yes? This is actually the first time that I'm actually getting to, like, get all of the seasons because I get to go a little bit of everywhere. Because usually in Texas, it's always hot. Like yesterday, it was eight, uh, 70 degrees. This morning, it was 32 degrees, so... All right. Yeah. And you, Valentina, how are you, baby? I'm great. Hello, everyone. It's me, Valentina. <laughs> yes! I'm great. No, I just, I just ate a banana. Y'all just saw me. It's so cold here. I be cramping up, so I need some potassium. <laughs> she has hot tea over here, too. I'm dying, and bitch. Because, you know, what's the tea, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we're so happy to have you guys, and I want to let everyone know that tonight at 10.30, we all perform, so make sure you stick around after the viewing party. We also have servers uh, walking around if you want some food or some cocktails, so be sure to uh, get yourself some food and cocktails, yeah? Yes. Any other announcements before we get into the gig? No, we'll talk about them later. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so... <laughs> I want to talk yeah, about Have you guys happened. been watching the season? Yes? Yes. Tell me your thoughts. What are you guys thinking so far? Girl, it's so long. <laughs> The, we are on episode 10, and we still have eight girls left. Yeah. Dang. Damn, I didn't even think about it like that. Yeah. Dang. But them girls making their money. I ain't mad at them. Do your thing, boo-boo. Okay. I, I, yeah, how the hell are they going to pull that off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Have you been watching it? Yes, I have. And, you know, there has been so much of the Drag Race franchise and Holland and Thailand and over here, over there. And then sometimes people be talking like, oh, there's just so much. It's too much now. It's too much. Now. But, but then I come down to it and like the emotional roller coaster that I am and then all of a sudden there's Drag Race once a week. So that's like a relief for me to get through my week. Like, ooh, I can at least watch Drag Race. So for me, as, as a fan of the show, before I even got on, I was, I, was, I was hooked. I was so into it. And even now, like, I'm not on the show anymore, but I still watch it. I'm still that cheese mosa trying to be like, ooh, what's the tea? Who's in the bottom? <laughs> okay, wait. Sometime, and sometimes I'm really bitter. I'm, I'm like, I'm glad they got rid of her. She got on my nerves. <laughs> you know, so, you know, there's still the opportunity to have that kind of... Meanwhile, the whole room is like, damn, who was she talking yeah, about? Yeah, who? We want to know. <laughs> At Roscoe's, we want to know who the hell it is. Yeah, who yeah, is yeah. it? <laughs> I mean, you can share if you'd like. No, no, no. no. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, no. no. Now let me ask you this: If there was a RuPaul's Drag Race Mexico, would you be? Would you be? Would, is that something you would even be a part of? Would you like to yes. be a part of? Yeah. <laughs> see, okay, see, come on, see. Raja. <laughs> Raja's like, yes, give me a check. I'm doing it. <laughs> Is that something you would I, do? I would be honored. I, I mean, yes, of course. I mean, who else would they ask in Mexico? I mean, they're... But, but... I, but, lo the, I but, love I mean, the slight read. I <laughs> no, but aside from that, I have the experience of being on this show, you know? But, 
Um, hopefully one day in the future that'll happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the shade, this, it's not shade, it's just the tea. Yeah. It's just the reality of it, right? Yeah, something Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Okay, so okay, so we just saw what happened. So we saw Bosco won last week, and we had the two girls, Georges and um, Jasmine, in the bottom. They're both still here. Uh, <laughs> Can I ask y'all? Do y'all think that was like really a double save, or did somebody? For, I just think that the lip sync was very lackluster. Like, see. This is what I thought. I thought the lip sync, lip sync. Because oh, we'll talk about we'll it later. Well, Uh-oh. Girl, I, I don't think I'm ready for this. <laughs> okay, so both of you got to experience um, Snatch Game. What is the best way to prepare for it? And how did you guys feel when you guys did your uh, Snatch Game characters? Well, I'm not brought, really the one to ask because I never won. And um, even if I went back again, I would probably not win because it's just not my tea. Um, but I would say just don't, don't do what I did, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you did two uh, Snatch Games, right? Yeah, and then one of them was Snatch Game of Love. Ooh. Well, you know, I think... An actual snatch game is easier than the snatch game of love because we did the snatch game of love on uh, All Star Six as well. And for me, the challenge was that I was like paired in a group with Eureka and um, Pandora. So, like, trying to balance off of their characters as opposed to having like a full room of people and characters to actually like go back and forth with. But I had so much fun during our Snatch Game. I was actually super nervous because it was my first time doing it. I got eliminated on season 11, the episode right before Snatch Game. So I was able to do the LaToya character that I had planned for season 11 for All Stars. And it went well. I made Mother Rue yeah, laugh. it went really well. She loved it. She loved it. Yeah, I was, I was surprised that it went so well, but you know. I did what needed to be done. I made it through the challenge, okay? Did yeah. you have any did you have a backup character? Uh, my backup character was gonna be Grace Jones. Mm -hmm. What about But BB had already done Grace Jones like a couple of years before, so what about you, Valentina? Did you have like cause they tell you you know, they when we prepare for it, they tell you to bring more than one. What what did you bring? Did you have more than one? Well, Angeria's over here doing Tammy Brown. I was gonna do Tammy Brown. Yeah, when I auditioned, I did Tammy Brown. Yeah, I did. I love Ooh, her. Can we see some of your Tammy Brown? I, I could do her lit. lit. <laughs> uh -huh. No, I'm not kidding. I'm really a big Tammy Brown fan. <laughs> so we we're, love her. We're oh, big Tammy Brown fans here. Yes, yes. Okay, so going into Snatch Game, do you think it's easier to do a character that's already been done or create something um, that RuPaul can see for the first time and you can make your own laughs and your own puns. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? It's probably easier to do a character kind of like uh, Simone did with Harriet Tugman, do a character that nobody knows who the character is or what their actual isms are. Y'all better are. know who she is now. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the demeanor of the character. So just come and do that because you're just making it up and you're able to just make your own laughs and... That's what I think. The smart way to go, right? Yeah, that's what I would think. I think the people that win are the people that are just sitting there having a good time. They're just sitting there making Rue laugh and having a good time. Because even, look at Jujube. She's over there just <laughs> going off for like the 10th time <laughs> with a different character. And every time she gets me, I'm like, okay, I, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really, she don't look like none of them, but she's giving it her best. And, and, and the reality is you don't have to look like them. You don't even have to sound like them. You just have to give, give that energy the whole time. You just have to make Rue laugh. And I think... You the, really just have to make Rue laugh. It doesn't yeah. even matter if you're staying in that character. Girl, just pull some punches. I think that's what the mini challenges are for, too, is to get yeah. the queens out of their head, yeah. loosen them up, because, you know, you have to be crazy to do those challenges, and the mini challenges aren't judged. So it's kind of like these are your... Those, that's your break to just like your warm up. That was and quite the I mini think, challenge and, this and week. And I think Rue Gate kind of gives it away when she says, It's so bad that it's good. Yeah. 
So it's like that's what you gotta do. Just so absurd and outside the box that it it's just hilarious. Yeah, it's you funny. have to like yeah. be so ridiculous and laugh at yourself. <laughs> All oh. right. <laughs> okay, ladies, who do you th- who who were your standouts with the beginning? Just just the look alone and their intro. Who were your standouts? Who made me laugh the most was Deja, Bitch. for sure. Deja, yeah. Uh, I liked um, Willow's Drew Barrymore, yeah. the lisp. <laughs> um, I think Deja's was, it was incredible and very strong. I also like Angeria's Tammy Brown a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Ozzy Osbourne could be good. Di might be really well in this. Yeah. Yeah. I think when the character's so far off from who they are, it's good, right? Yeah, what do I you think guys think? Yeah, I think that's easier. kind of like a good strategy, right? Yeah, I think they've chose pretty good characters. The Bessie DeVos is starting to scare me a little bit. <laughs> well, I know with my experience on, on Drag Race and, and, and doing Snatch Game is that I would always start really strong, real fierce, like all these jokes in my pocket, you know? Like, I'm good. I got the look, I'm good. But then as it would tire out, I would tire out myself and then be like, damn, I might not make it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, but I think, I think Willow was really, really fabulous. I just wish she would give me a little bit more. Because Drew Barrymore, she talks from the side of her mouth. She's like, I'm just really excited to yeah. be here. Like, she's always yeah. talking from yeah. the side of her mouth. Like, it's not in the middle. <laughs> so I just wish she would give me a little bit of that, like, you guys, that kind of thing. You, totally. You've given me two lips tonight. Drew Barrymore <laughs> and Tammy Brown, bitch. I love that. I love that. Okay. Who, who do you think might be in trouble? Betsy. Betsy. Betsy uh, and even Georges again. Mm. There's a lack of energy, yeah, yes? it I, is. There's like... Ugh. I've never seen Broad City, so I don't know. Don't kill me, sorry. Um, yeah, I know how y'all get. Um... So I don't know, but now I want to see and, and you know, have that comparison to who this woman is that Georges is trying to portray. So like for me, I have no, and you know, I don't know how it's going to go because I don't know that gal, but you guys know who Broad City is. Yeah. I liked Bosco too. I don't know who the character is that she was doing. What's Bosco doing? Gwyneth Paltrow? Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yes, yes, yes. Like, from, you from know, Shakes- with her knowledge, I feel like she knows Gwyneth yeah, Paltrow. what she's doing, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it sounds like she really knows what she's doing with, with Gwyneth. Yeah, totally. Okay, so we talked about what just happened. Now we can talk about other stuff really quick. <laughs> I've been wanting to ask Valentina about this forever. Tell me about your experience on Rent. How was that? That was at, well, kudos to you, first of all, yes. for landing such a wonderful job and representation. So happy for you. But tell us how that experience was for you. Absolutely life changing and incredible. It was the most artistic challenge that I'd ever had. It was very challenging. Um, what ended up happening was for our dress rehearsal, they recorded it, and the next day, that's what they put up. We never got to do the live performance. And because one of the guys broke mm-hmm. his ankle or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but the months and like just just the kind of focus that they had and in, in training me and doing the rehearsals, <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> that okay. was interesting. Hey. So, girl, I smell a six-way lip sync coming on. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> Full boots. <laughs> when she said uh, it's over, oh, you the game. Go. I was like, no, wow. <laughs> Raven did not laugh one a, no. anybody else but Lil, Little John. Yeah. Little John. Yeah. Yeah. Oh little. man. And who is Dove? A Disney star? <laughs> a little Nobody old for in the audience knows. <laughs> this bitch is so shady. <laughs> if those bitches out there can pretend, you can too. I guess so. <laughs> okay, so um I was gonna ask who's in trouble, who's not, who's this. Deja's the only one, in my opinion, that's yeah. safe. What do you guys think? I would have to say so. Let's give it up for Deja. She's yeah. really... Yeah! She's really giving us her all. I met Deja on tour um, before she had ever gotten on Drag Race, and my first impression with her is having her this close. Her mug was just perfection. And to see her be on the show, like, I'm so proud of her. Shout out to you, girl. I'm 
sending you hello. You are now part of the club. Welcome. Yes, sis, we love you. We had her here two weeks yeah. and we thought the same oh thing. God. The mug was so right. And she's just the sweetest person she ever. Lo- yeah. She's really awesome. So much fun. And yeah. she loves trade, so hey. <laughs> got a good she was girlfriend. here like a whole week, bitch. <laughs> terrorizing all the trade that we have here. Anyway, um, so we, uh, we um, like, totally lost my train of thought that I was talking about trade. Why you bring up trade? I lost it. Oh, uh, because uh, you are the trade. Uh. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I hate you, Maddie. <laughs> okay, so um, last week no one went home. How do we feel about that when nobody goes home? The audience last week was very expressive of the fact that they hate when people <laughs> stay and yeah. don't go home. Yeah. Do you guys feel the same way? Like, ugh. Well, I, when I think about this competition and how it's set up, it's set up for people to go home every week. So make a decision, queen. Like, it ain't that hard. You know what I'm saying? To me. Uh, Especially when it comes down to like lip syncing, and then we see the lip syncs, and it's kind of like, okay, yeah. you couldn't make a decision out of right. out of this. So let me ask you. This was the hard one. Let me ask you both this: You saw last week's lip sync. Who would have sashayed home? Both based of them. on you. Me, I would have sent Jasmine home. Valentina, who would you have sent home? <sighs> Let me be professional. Yeah, Jasmine. It would have to have been Jasmine. Audience, yeah. you guys felt the same way? Yeah. Well, and I think we know that RuPaul's not going to send Georgia's home. Like, that's just not... It's, totally. This is already two times. So. And I think we already know that Jasmine is not going to win. <laughs> right? I mean, am I the only one that's like, why are we saving her? No, no, no. We, <laughs> We're giving her... <laughs> We're giving her the chance. Let's see if she got the chocolate or not. I want to see who has the chocolate already. <laughs> I always forget about that damn chocolate every week. Okay, so, yeah, I think we're all on, and on the same. And gaggy as she I'm has it. Say, girl. Gaggy as Jasmine has yeah, the chocolate. Wa- yeah, watch her have the fucking chocolate. Save her ass again. Oh, my God. Okay. Jasmine Adaya. You think so? I think. You think? You think so? Okay. So you both have done All-Stars. Tell me the difference between uh, your approach to both different seasons. Like, did it change from when you went to the regular season? And did it change from when you went to to All-Stars? My approach definitely changed. (laughs) Uh, Going into uh, Drag Race the first time, I didn't know what what I was expecting. I asked a lot of people about their experiences, and everybody was like, girl, you're gonna have a good time, the food is bomb, da 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 Girl, I get there, and it was totally not what I was expecting. It was like, I was isolated, I was alone, I was in my feelings, and then I came back and had to do the damn thing. Ooh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, she's, I, she's not happy. I don't think so. I don't think Mm-mm. she's gonna be nice this time. I don't think so either. Damn. So, I, From my experience, I benefited from this because one time there were two queens. They were both bad. She sent both of them home. She brought me back. Do you think this was that bad for her to do something that extreme? Yes. Yes. At least a five-person lip sync. I'm just saying. I mean, how many Snatch Games have we watched so far through the years, you know? A lot, yeah. you know. So I mean, there have been some like standout moments when it was bad, but this like there was only one standout that just kind of kept going for us. So I don't know what she's gonna do. I don't. <laughs> I think it's so disappointing too that the snatch game was such a letdown because this is the one category that you were prepared for before you like when you auditioned. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you've had plenty of time to develop a character or figure something out. And, and, you know, I think sometimes, and tell me what you ladies think about this, sometimes you have your people who are naturally funny, and day-to-day, they are, they're just hilarious. But when they try to be funny, it's a big old flop. Like, what do you guys think? Is, do you think that happens with some of the girls? On? I do. But I also think that Snatch Game, because being in the room when you do Snatch Game, you have to listen and respond to what 
you know, because you can't really go in. You can have like some isms and some some notes that you want to, you know, put forth. But I feel like you have to listen and be smart. And then also let this character be a, like just an extension of your own personality. That way it's funny, not yeah. work. That's w yeah. That way it's not work. Can I mention something that I thought was really interesting and funny? Absolutely. Did you guys notice that Lady Camden's Shakespeare had t titty Boobs. cleavage? <laughs> I was like, that is such a funny detail. I barely caught into her last moment. That, I thought that was really funny. I think she did that because she was telling her to, to, put the, to put both of those characters that she had brought her back up and then with Shakespeare together. That's what we saw. And you know, sometimes listening to Rue helps you out in a challenge too. But then, in this case, I guess maybe not. I think too what happened with this one, did you notice how they were all, they all looked defeated. They, yeah. would, give, they would give a joke and then it didn't land and then they, other Snatch Games, you know, people would interject and would run in on somebody else's answer. Everyone here was like crickets, quiet, like I defeated. I did notice that. There was plenty of, p plenty of like bones thrown to like add on to that, that didn't get caught on to. That's no. what I was saying about you have to listen and then respond because it's like conversational. Yeah. So if you saying something, you need to be listening to what she's saying so you can respond to what she's saying, even if the question is not coming to you. Don't wait for mother to ask you the question because we know the question is coming, but we need to talk about what she just said. Yeah. And I think because the things weren't landed, everyone was just so defeated, no one wanted to say anything. Did she change? She didn't change anybody's character, did she? Like, you know how she has All right. The runways. Who <laughs> were your favorites? Who were your tops and who were your bottoms? All right, just let me just say that um, RuPaul looks incredible. Yes, yeah, she does. RuPaul's team is really fierce right now. Curtis is on the hair, Raven's doing makeup, and Zaldi is doing the outfit, and she looks absolutely incredible. When I was on my season, on season nine, there was a switch of team for RuPaul. And when I saw her for the first time, she was looking like Serena Chacha, and I was like, what happened? <laughs> and, and, and one day, the documentary's gonna come out, and we're gonna know what happened. But what, from that moment to now, this team that she has got her looking so coiffed and so sickening, the shape, the makeup, everything is blend. It's beautiful. So I think the winner of the runway challenge today was RuPaul. I love Georges's, especially since I'm a girl that indulges. So that's after my own heart. I work. I'm going to her church, okay? Um, who else did I like? I liked Bosco's, although we saw her in that same outfit last week different boot, so I'm not really that impressed, but it was cute. Um, my bo Oh, and Julia, I loved her. Yeah, yeah. That was very on point. It's very on brand for her. Who did I not like? I didn't like Deja's. As Joan of Arc. Uh, you were like, I love her. Oh, and Daya too. How does she even trip? What does she trip on? Well, she, she just got to, take, to she got she to, tried to take Lady Camden's um and her runway. Her. Mm. Then she took Bosco's answers. Okay. <laughs> Poor girl. Dang. Not a good week. Who do you see in the bottom, Naisha? Who's your top and bottom? Um, I don't know. Okay, am I the only one that I and I this she's actually one of my favorites, but what's Willow? I didn't get it. It was what's the whole thing? Oh, Willow. It's she's With trying mushroom. like a mushroom. Mushroom. I think how? she she, she could have given me a little more whimsical. She could have given me a little more Toad from Mario Kart. Just a little bit more. Cuz that's what she was and I loved it. I love I live for Willow Pill. I, I liked it. I just think it, there could have been a little bit more volume and a little bit more, more, more punch. Throw some crystals in the red parts, maybe. Because um, she, she, did, she did good. But the thing is, this week, to, to be quite honest, in the words of uh, Kenny Danforth, I was not enthused <laughs> by none of the looks because it's holy couture. Couture means like French, like one of a kind, hand sewn. And none, none of, even you guys, I know you guys like Bosco, but she was wearing, you know, lingerie. That's not couture. Right. 
to, at least to me and people in, in, in Paris, France, that's not going to be couture for them. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been to Paris, France, and they will not be enthused. Um, um, but, but I really do feel like somebody could have given like something really regal of like the Catholic Church, you know, and nobody really gave it that level of regalia. I think George's is probably the closest one to it with the exception of the like weed, right? But I like the big old blunt more than the whole outfit, right. to be honest. The outfit was cute. Thanks. The concept. She took us there with the concept. The concept of the devil's lettuce, she hit it out the park. But if you tell me couture, I'm going to be like, no ma'am, that was not couture. You know, it's well, nice. I think, I think she was thinking like uh, Monet did the R Rihanna Met Gala yeah. ins Pope inspired look. Mm -hmm. So I got it for that. I don't remember Jasmine in this runway. What did Jasmine do? She had the, the oh, reveal she, she had the reveal with she the was a Gemini, Gemini. Oh. Oh. astrology one. She okay. should have never worn the first part. Yeah. Right down, yeah. Because, I love the headpiece. Because that second dress was definitely haute couture. I told you it was not going to be good. That was stressful. Yeah. That stressed me out. Valentina's like, how are you holding up? <laughs> Like, Would you guys say that was the worst uh, Snatch Game in history? Season four. Since season four? Who was season four? Do you guys remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm assuming she was just bad. Because <laughs> the way they just said her name with no Holy problem. Shit. Yeah, she's like Fifi O'Hara. <laughs> was that the season where Kenya Michaels was like a crazy Beyonce? See, that was a better episode than this. <laughs> because at least we had that chaotic energy going on. With this, it was just kind of like, whoa. But, I mean, we've, we, us girls that have been on the show, we've gone through really great characters. These poor girls are, like, hold, like trying to grab, like, whatever's left. No, totally. And, you know, the game, the game has changed. And I think that these girls went in there with a strategy opposed to, like what you said, you want to see your personality kind of come through this character, right? What do you think the strategy was? I think, no, I think they had their own, which was like jokes. Oh, I think okay. they were trying to do like, trying to prepare and, and to prepare is not to, it's just, just get the character together and then just kind of react and have yeah. fun with it and that's it, really. And that's I think I they th had a strategy. I mean, going in, and you all have done this before, you know what you want to do, but I think this season is taking so long and they're getting in their heads and they're like, shit, what the fuck is going on? You know, it's week after week and nobody went home last week, so now this, and now they're all shitting their pants up there right now. We'll find out next week, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, what do you, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm literally like, well, at least Deja is finally going to get her win. Yes. Okay. I'm so excited that she's going to she's gonna get this win because she was, I mean, crying over it the last time. She's so exactly. close. So for her to get the win, I'm, I'm super excited for her. May I say something? Absolutely. I love that you ask. She's so polite. May I say something? Bitch, say something. Aw, <laughs> thank you. I'm just so honored to be here with Raja O'Hara, y'all. I really am. Before, it's such an honor because um, I was texting one of my best friends, Nick Bosian, who absolutely loves and we both love you. Um, we quote you a lot. Um, but I was just telling him, like, guess who I'm going to be with, blah, blah. So it's such an honor. And I, I can't leave here today without saying, like, so a pretty girl like you going to come for an ugly girl like me. <laughs> now I know. Now I know. I live, I live. That quote is everything. I love it. Everything. This is actually our first time ever meeting, so this is like super exciting. <laughs> she just fangirled all on you. I love it. <laughs> Raja, and I, I love to remind people about this, but Raja, did you make everything on your own? See, uh, like, how, mu how much did you make? I did. All right, before we get into the untucked, uh, we're going to do a Q&A in a little bit, uh, but really quick, let's get your reactions. What do you think about what just happened? Girl, I told you. I told you all they asses was gonna be lip syncing. You know, when mother gets mad, she really like she really gets mad. Because on all I mean on um season eleven, when we had the acting challenge and the entire team decided not to throw anybody under the bus, she was pissed. 
and it was like visibly pissed. And she had the same look in her eye, and I was like, girl, oh, they about to, they about to do it. But how special and amazing is it that they get a whole new episode to come back to lip sync? Put all seven of their asses on the stage and see who come out the top, okay? That's all I'm saying. Do you think she's gonna do it like that or she's gonna do it in brackets? It's probably gonna brackets. be like... I think it's gonna be the way um, Silky, Silky sh- shuts did. it down. I think yeah, they so. need to bring Silky back just because. <laughs> Okay. I think they should just call Silk and be like, Silky, we got a gig for you. Just come on and do give us a whole episode again. Girl, nobody is winning um, season 14, so we need you to come in. And <laughs> Here's your redemption, girl. So it, it kind of, I don't know if you guys got the same vibe, it kind of looks like the whole episode is going to be dedicated to this lip sync. Is that what you think is? It looks like the whole episode. They showed nothing else but them on stage. So, I mean... We're going to like it. Do you think... Yeah, I... Well, you know what? We're going to live. Did you like the Silky one? Because I lived for yeah, that. Yeah, I lived. You, yeah, I just I lived felt so it. bad because she... I know that bitch was tired, honey. Ooh. Silky. Oof. But that was... It was on different it days. Done, it wasn't it all wasn't on the done. same day. Oh, it wasn't. Okay, good. Fierce. Well, from like a business standpoint, technically, we all live for the moment of lip sync. So, if we were to have a drag race show that was all lip sync, that's what they're trying to give us. So that's what's, what's going to be next week, and it's going to be sickening, no? I think it's going to be absolutely <laughs> sickening. I think it's going to be very telling of the girls' entertainment value, who can entertain and who cannot. Because all of these girls are like very much, I'm a lip sync, I do this for a living, and da 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 But they ain't sitting nobody home. So you're not that good. Okay. You're Raja, good enough to pass. Raja needs to smoke, girl. How, how nice does Asia Sky feel right now? Can you imagine what she's thinking? She deserves it, though. You know, she yeah. was so close last week. And if we're talking shoulder pads, I, personally, I thought that she should have won. But, you know, that's its opinion, and we all have one, kind of like assholes. So, um, here she is, and she's safe this week, and she's safe next week. So, good for her. So, that means nobody went home tonight. No one went no, home last, last week. week. Nobody went home last week. So next week, do two people go home? Probably. And you see, you know how they do this like, oh, double keep, double eliminate. I, I'm fine with that. What I, last time I was here in, at Roscoe's, there was a double win. Mm. I'm not having that. Okay. <laughs> see, that's the one that I'm like, we can't do this. Okay. We can't do this. I, do. I didn't watch this whole season to watch two people win. Yeah. I didn't, know if it was a, I didn't know if it was a challenge win or if it was like the win of the title. We're, we're talking about uh, the, uh, Monet, Monet, Monet and, and Trinity. Trinity. That Trinity was a win. mess. Yeah. That was too much. They should have just yeah. picked one. <laughs> well, I was there. Trinity was doing way better competitive wise with her package. To be honest, she did way better. All right. right, all right. So we're going to do a little Q&A. Before we start the Q&A, we'll remind you guys that we perform at 10.30 p.m. So stick around afterward. Yeah, um, do we have any questions in the audience for Valentina and Raja? Where do we have? Okay, Betty, uh, Batty's on her way over there. Batty, not Betty. It's an accident, girl. I still have chicken <laughs> in my mouth. Hi. Yes. Valentina, I love you. I met you in Houston one time. It was amazing. But my question's for Raja. <laughs> <laughs> I love when they do that. Yeah, yeah, thank They're us so out. Shady. Uh, mi amor, uh, I'm also from Dallas, Texas. I flew Ooh. in from Chicago. I came from Dallas last, this morning, actually. Um, I, I don't have a question for you. I just, I love you. And I'm from Dallas, too. And I just wanted you to recognize I love me, you. So. Thank yeah. you for coming to Chicago to sip. Support and uh, show love. That means the absolute world to me. Come on, Dallas in the building. Woo! Yes, I have a question. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Eric. I love you both, Valentina and Raja. But my question is, is for Valentina. Valentina, um, so I assume you've been watching La Mas Draga in Mexico. That Where- was an assumption. Well, <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> okay, well, I just have one question. Because there is La Mas Draga in Mexico, do you agree that it should be a drag race Mexico? 
Well, I mean, there already is La Mastraga in, in, in Mexico, but I definitely think it's not up to the same caliber as RuPaul's Drag Race um, because La Mastraga is a show on YouTube. So, yeah, I think there should be a RuPaul's Drag Race Mexico. Yeah. Oh, that's up to World of Wonder, y'all. When they call and get the check right. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, real quick before we um, grab some more questions, we want to let you know who's going to be joining us next week. So. Next week. Um, I know our, we have Lady you, Camden. Lady Camden. <laughs> Jasmine Kennedy and Daya Betty. We'll all be here next week. The link is now live on our Instagram profile. The link so is live. So feel free to go ahead and uh, click on that and get your tickets. I see some of you popping out with your phones. Gorgeous. Yes, do that, please. All right, I have so to, I have a question. Oh, I have to say real quick how fierce they are. Bitch, next week is sold out already. Next week is sold out. Fierce. Y'all, Standing room only, so. Roscoe's, y'all don't fuck around. No, they don't. Kudos to you. Did you get a seat? <laughs> Good girl. I so I have a question right over here, ladies. Hello. Um, I just wanted to a thank everybody who's representing us in this room right now. Y'all all represent different communities, and as a Hispanic Latina um, growing up in Texas, I didn't get this. And so thank you, even our black, our brown, all of you right now in this room who is here. Just thank you before I ask my questions. So thanks. Um, well, thank you for that. Love you. That's so sweet of you. Um, so I moved to Chicago. Tell her y'all welcome. <laughs> She's welcome. She's giving y'all compliments. So, You're welcome, uh, darling. <laughs> thank you. But my question is, um, from your seasons, what is your most favorite iconic look that you are the most proud of? Um, both seasons that y'all were on. So, like, what is your most favorite iconic look um, that you would like to share with us? So, I'm going to let you guys think about that. Raja... For me, it's everything you wore because you fucking made everything. And Thank then you. for Valentina, it's the wedding dress with the super long veil. Mm -hmm. That was stunning. That was like one of my favorite, favorite, favorites. Okay, now you guys, what do you guys have? Uh, season 11, I would say my entrance look because it was literally made out of new newspaper. Uh, it was like paper mache and I actually ended up throwing it in the trash when I got eliminated because I was so, like, I was so devastated. And I was like, I got sent home on a design challenge. Throw everything away. So I threw it away. It was actually one of my favorite pieces. Um, and from All Star 6, I don't know which one is my favorite. I love them all. The patterns, yes, yes, yes. That was a good one. I love that one too. Well, I would consider something that would be like a favorite from season nine was the wedding challenge. I had a designer quit on me super last minute, so I, I, I had somebody that had a vintage store let me take the dress and it had to be styled to the nines and I styled it to the nines and won that week. Um, and then on All Stars 4, aesthetically, it's not the most pretty, but it has a lot of personal history to me for the curves and swerves um, challenge. What I was wearing was actually made out of my actual mannequin body that my designer had made. So there was, a, there was a mannequin that had my real proportions. It was a man's mannequin that got added chest and shoulders and hips to, to mimic my body. And so what ended up happening was it got cut off and made into a gown. And so the, the, just the relationship to my clothing in that piece is what's very special to me. Girl. Nasha, you know what I just thought about? What? Girl, what if this Lala Perusa uh, lip sync, they bring lip sync assassins to bring these oh. to compete? Mm. Oh! <laughs> oh, just when the girls Did thought they had sized up their competition in the room. That would be fierce, though. That in comes so Heidi and Closet. Kick, ka, 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 ka. <laughs> Boo! Okay. Do you think she would do that for a regular season like this? I, I mean, I this mean, is a gag. It, it is a gag. I don't, I don't know that she would do it because it, in it, it in itself is kind of a gag. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's kind of fierce, bitch. That would be It'll everything. Be fierce. Every, on my every, show, on my show, hello. when I put everybody up for elimination, <laughs> I'm bringing all my home girls to yeah. send them all home. Or it could oh, be you, like every oh, week. Oh, you think you bad? <laughs> they, they reveal. Somebody every week, and every week it's the silhouette of Silky, Ma Silky Nutmeg. <laughs> Reveal yourself! <laughs> that would be so okay. funny. 
That would be so good. <laughs> we have a question for you ladies right over here. Pardon me. Hi, first off, all four of you are look amazing. Thank you very much. Roscoe's as well for putting this on. We just flew in from Seattle this weekend, first time to Chicago. Welcome. Welcome. Thank, you. Thank you, Roscoe. Your community here is amazing. So, it is. It really um, is. My question would be for all of you, if you were to be brought back as a coach or a mentor from any episode in previous seasons, what would you want to be brought back for to coach or, or mentor an episode? Whoa, I love that. Okay, um, I who think, wants to start I with think that? me, for, it would have to be something sewing related or sewing challenge yes. related. Because uh, I just have such a wealth of knowledge for sewing and fashion. Ah. <laughs> or maybe like they brought Alyssa uh, in on uh, season 11 as a runway coach. Yeah. I would love to do that. Because you know I got a nasty no, totally. ass walk. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Valentina? What would you? I personally would live, it would, in my fantasy, if I could, I would just be like, like my own version of RuPaul in Mexico, just behind the panel, just judging. Okay. That would be it for me. I think that would be it. I would be like the motivational one. Like, don't get in your head. You're better than this. You, can, you got this. Like, I would be that person because I'm actually really that person in real <laughs> life. So I would be that person. Because um, everything else, you know, comes back. Really, and you guys know this. On the show, they will get to you. They will get in your head. They will fuck you up where you are questioning yes. everything. So I would love to be that person that's like, fuck Rue, get on that runway. That kind <laughs> of thing. So yeah, that would be me. <laughs> All right, I have another question. All right, we have a guys. question right here. Oh, I, can I work wait, with Batty, you Wait, wait, you were supposed to answer that question too, Batty. Oh, what, I would what would do, you do? I would help with like the dance challenge. Okay. I would take the left feet and make them right feet. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Yeah. Okay, hi. Also, this isn't my question, but what if they brought the eliminated girls back next week for the SmackDown? Ooh! Ooh. Wait, okay. it's only been four girls that's got eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> well. You would think it's more than that. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot believe that it's only been four girls. Are you and then kidding? the final one is silky. We have been here for like so all the many weeks. Within the, the last one is silky. Well, you guys have to understand, there's been actually four whole episodes <laughs> where no one has gone home. Yeah. That's, really? Yeah, that, yeah, four. Okay, right? Josh, yeah. Josh has a real question for you, okay, ladies. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, both of you, when you came back to All Stars, I feel like you wanted to, like, show a different aspect or, like, kind of, like, prove something or, like, do something that you couldn't do on your season. So how did that affect your preparation going in? And would you do another season, like a something versus the world, as we all know that that's about to start happening every year? Canada. Um, you gonna answer the question today, or what's up? <laughs> would, I, would I come back for something versus the world? Before you both answer, it won't be, uh, let's say it's not on BBC, let's say it's in America and you're getting Money. paid. You're getting paid. Oh, okay, hey, that's the question. Now that imagine. might change your the entire question, outlook on this. The answer. question is do I get to split the uh, proceeds from my song with RuPaul with three different organizations, or do I get to keep some of those proceeds for myself? Okay. <laughs> um, what was the first part of the question? Coming back, something. Well, I just wanted to show myself because what I saw on season 11 was not myself. What I saw was like the diabetic version, like what they're doing. No, when I say the diabetic version, because I'm sure she's a sweet girl, but you know, when you get into that confessional room and then they start asking you, how do you feel? And then you go in there and you tell them exactly how you feel. Then they edit you to be like a bitter bitch. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to go back and let people know that I actually am cool as a fan. I'm down to earth. I'm really like everybody's homegirl. And that's who I am as a person. So I didn't want to go back and put on any other characters. I just wanted to be myself. Um, I, you know, I, I, I would never say never, but I don't know if this is the time right now, because I did make such a great mark from All Stars. That a girl. But you know, Juju said if they call, girl, say yeah. 
So, girl, if they call, I'll get yeah. Well, I guess I would answer that coming back, what I really wanted to prove to the audience was that I... Could lip sync. Would lip sync. Yeah. Yes, and you had to turn it out, too. So some people would think, like, oh, it was such a setup. There was a, there was a, a song for her there, and, and I think it was, and I did it, and I won. <laughs> like, it might have been set up, but I fell into it. It worked out. Poor Sierra was there. We did not do this beat. Is automatic, supersonic, hypnotic. And yeah. they, they, we, y'all sickening. I did y'all want me to see me do that? Because I would have turned it too. Okay. In, in my own Tammy Brown way, though. Hit it, DJ. <laughs> 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 no, but um, I, I wanted to show that I could lip sync. And I also really wanted to enjoy the experience. Because the first time that I went around, I did not enjoy any of it. I w- like like George, I was yeah. tired. Yeah. I was tired and I was trying to win. And I was trying to win the golden ticket. Mm-hmm. And I did. And it was chocolate. And, well, <laughs> <laughs> and well, it felt like it was chocolate. But now I'm sitting on all these gold coins, girl, um, in, in the long run. But the second time around, I wanted to come into the experience and pull away from it saying, like, I did it. I lived it. I looked stunning. In my alternate reality, I already won. <laughs> y'all know me. Y'all see me on TV acting crazy. Um, and I, I also wanted to show that I had an evolution of style outside of drag as well. So that's something I wanted to, to show and prove as well, which I don't think a lot of people are trying to offer because they just wear like cargo shorts and T-shirts when they're not doing drag. But I do think that's a really great opportunity for everybody to kind of show your sense of style as a person and not just as an artist. Valentina Girl, just but read you, every but, you, but you know they only give you a couple of suitcases, so Bitch. you know when it comes down to it, I'm gonna bring my drag and then my boy clothes is just gonna be my boy clothes. <laughs> cargo they just pants. Gonna be, they she, gonna be my cargo pants or whatever I show up in. Okay. She read every, every boy out of drag. <laughs> Not cargo shorts. Okay, we have okay. another question over here. Um, absolutely love you both. Thank you for being here. Speaking of things from like either All Stars or your regular season, what's one thing that you did like in a confessional or a challenge that like we did not see that you wish we would have seen on the show? I think we saw all of Raja's confessionals because they were the best ones. <laughs> Bitch, they showed all of yours. Um, no, what what do you think? What 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 would you wish they would have seen that they, we didn't get to see? Anything? Or any I, fights or I, anything? I honestly can't even think of... No, what I wish they would have shown, but they did not. It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> we'll take it. But on episode two, uh, when we were doing the ball challenge, we were getting ready for the ball challenge. We were in the workroom. Everybody's sewing. Everybody's stressing out. Everybody's doing their thing. Jiggly is over there trying to figure it out, trying to come up with stuff. But in the meantime, Akira and Jiggly are reading. They spent three hours literally reading each other back and forth. Like just ripping each, like yelling across the room. Like, you know how girls do in the dressing room. But it was like, it was cut though. It was so much fun. I don't know why or how they edited any of that out. Because they had so much footage. And it was who, Jiggly and who? Akira. Akira. Man, that would have been good to see. All right, do we have any, uh, Valentina, anything that you remember that maybe happened on your season that you're like, I wish they would have shown this? M- me re- rehearsing and trying to memorize my lip syncs in, my, in my, um, my hotel room, in my underwear, just running around like a crazy person. Okay. That was it. I have one right here. I, this question is for Valentina. Valentina, my name's Eric. Uh, Miguel, who's my husband, is absolutely obsessed with you. He's from Venezuela. He wants to know what compelled you on the stage to represent Venezuela, and he thinks it's a very iconic thing that you did. Is there any reason why you picked Venezuela, and why was that so important for you? Oh my, what a great question. Thank you so much. Arriba Venezuela. So I've had a big obsession with Venezuelan culture in general in Latin America because they're the, the highest title winners of all of pageantry in the world. So they have, um, a, a pageant coach that turns these girls out. And when I mean by turns them out, it's like plastic surgery, um, walk, training how to walk, what to answer. And these girls are basically like 18 years old and he like 
puts them through like a boot camp and turns them into like some mature woman. And so when it comes to Venezuela and beauty, they know it's it. They, they're, they're always winning the titles. And so whenever I created my persona, I always had really in mind that I wanted to be like the Miss Venezuela of the drag world. Yeah. And now Ismael Sosa's not there no more, so it's not the same. It's not the same in Venezuela without Osmel being there to coach them. He's in, in, he's in Argentina now, right? Osmel? Where are you? Yeah, I don't know what country I'm all the way in the back over here. <laughs> but but, she, but she, didn't ra she didn't rank this year. Wherever he went, it didn't work. It didn't, no, it don't work. It don't no. work. It's not the same. No. It, that Venezuelan factory he had going on was everything. Yes, girl. He turned was. those girls out. We have another question for you guys. There's a lot of talk about how long the seasons are getting. What are your opinions? And do you think as the season goes on, it is negatively affecting the performance of the queens and the challenges? On behalf of World of Wonder, we think, <laughs> we think it's great to make a lot of money with all these episodes. Um, but no, I think, I think it, realistically, like, once you have an amazing cast of girls together, you want to try and keep that banter and that relationship with them as long as you can on the television. Because once you start eliminating girls and it becomes empty, and then they're not that entertaining per se, like, is that really making good television like the first episodes when you got everybody there at the same time? So I do find it really entertaining. I'll take it because a world without Drag Race is not a world I want to experience. Um, but yeah, I like it, personally. Do I feel like over time have we watered down the queens and they're not as amazing as they used to be? Absolutely. Absolutely. But for the younger audience, they still live. They live. I live too. <laughs> um, you... I personally feel like I'm not... I don't hate the fact that the episodes are getting long, not the episodes, but it's like longer and longer seasons because of course, Drag Race is one of my favorite shows, so the more Drag Race, the better. But I do feel like when there's a competition and we know that we're trying to get down to one person, the fact that we've saved 18 girls already, it's kind of like, are we bringing in new girls or are we just gonna like have to deal with them for the rest of the, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's dwindle it down. If we're gonna make this a competition, let's weed out the competition, personally. But I love Drag Race, I love, I think the more Drag Race, the better. And, and just to add, just because we're watching a longer season doesn't necessarily mean that they were there two, three more weeks longer right. than, because it's still, uh, I'm almost positive that they wrapped this up and they said, all right, now you guys have to, lip, you know what I mean, something like that, where they weren't uh, another three, four days or anything like that, because they be pulling shady shit like that, and they're like, okay, now get ready for this and that, and give you just a couple hours, so yeah. All right, we have another question. Wait, I have one right here. Oh, okay, sorry, I don't know where you're at. Hi. Um, I have a question for Raja. I know you're shocked. Um, so we have all, I think, been loving your fashion photo review with Shay. <laughs> cheers in the building. Thank you. Um, no, no, I said cheers in the building. Cheers all around, thanks. Um, but um, Shay has a really amazing podcast going over Top Model, and I was thinking about it earlier today. I thought, wow, it would be really great to see a podcast from Raja, maybe about like fashion, something like that. Would that be something you would ever do? You know, I've only considered doing a podcast once prior. Um, it's not something that I've like dabbled in, but I guess if y'all would want to hear me talk, I could kind of. Figure, yes. Figure oh, yes. Out. yes. 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 Valentina yes. needs more material. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I would be like, I'll be listening to you talk about. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like it. Mm. I ain't like it. Mm. No. Nah. Valentina, if you had a podcast, what would you talk about? Like, what kind of podcast would you have if you had one? Oh, I don't know. But the idea of a podcast is exciting because you don't have to get done. You don't up. gotta get ready, girl. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you just tell people follow the sound of my voice. <laughs> And I'll just talk about how glamorous life, I'll lay there looking just devastated, tragic, but just talking about how glamorous life can be. And there's a lot of things to talk about. 
All right, one more question. What would you here. talk about if you had a podcast? Um, I can do a pageant one, motivational one, stuff like that. Really like motivational. Yeah, this week. I, I swear. Hawaii I so let cool. you have it. I love it. <laughs> Hawaii was great. All right, we got a question over here. All right, hi. I love you both. You're both of my favorite queens. Uh, thank do you, you have a favorite untucked fight or drag race feud? Um, because I was in a drag race for you. No. <laughs> I don't have a favorite. <laughs> Me versus the cast of uh, season 11. <laughs> to be very, very honest, there's been many girls that have gotten into arguments with RuPaul himself. But nobody has done it like a slam dunk quite like Tammy Brown. When Tammy Brown gets in an argument, she defends herself. And when she got in an argument talking about, excuse your mouth, <laughs> I was living, I was living so bad. <laughs> now I really have to see you do your Tammy Brown impersonation. If you could do that tonight on the show, I would love it. Yeah. All right, we have a question for you over here. Uh, my question is for Valentina. Uh, how was it working with Gloria Trevi? Oh my goodness, just like you imagined, she's absolutely incredible. I, I consider her like a godmother of music to me because she really, she really came about in, in a time where I, I was really trying to live and, and, and push this idea of being a pop star on stage from my wigs and my outfits. And then Gloria Trevi came around and took me under her wing and I got to work with her and I got to be very intimate with her in a music video. And just the opportunity to like grow up having admired people in, in the industry and then to be in a place where you get to, to work with them, it's like a full circle moment. And I'm really honored to have been able to work with her and I've seen her, I ran into her at a wedding once, it was everything. Um, and it's a big honor for me to, to have worked with, with someone like Gloria Trevi who, who I admire so much, who, who keeps it going with her career um, after so much, um, turbulence, you know? So Gloria Trevi to me is one of my icons that I got to work with and I'm very, very honored. So any more? We got one more right, right over here. Okay, hold on. I'll I have a on. question. Oh no, I forgot it. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go right here. I have a question for both of you. What are some um, big things that you are currently working on that maybe you can talk about? Or oh, if not, maybe give us a little bit of a hint. Uh, what are you doing now? Future projects. Are there any that you can share? There's nothing that I can really share and talk about right now, but just stay tuned to the Raja O'Hara show. Yes. <laughs> um, I recently just worked with uh, Dita Von Teese. And I am exploring this new era of mine where before I was doing a lot of Latina pop star thing and I'm going into a new era for me where I'm really inspired by vedettes and ficheras from Latino America. So I'm trying to do more of a like 60s, 70s style Latin American showgirl aesthetic. Um, and I'm acting a lot more, I just filmed uh, a musical telenovela movie called La, La Usurpadora in, Me in Mexico. And I'm gonna be singing and acting and I'm really gonna go in with all that I can for that. And yeah, that's what I got going on. Thank you for the question. Love that and congratulations to both of you on your future projects. Do we have any more questions? Anything else? I think we're. Okay. Oh, there's one back here. Yeah, yeah, I see both of them. They just magically they like, appear. Hey, by the way, we got a question. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, there's another one, too. So this is kind of related to Valentina being rent, but it's a question for Raja. If you were ever asked to do a musical, what musical would you want to do and what role would you want to play? Ooh, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, dang, I don't really know a lot of musicals, to be honest. Um, but I would like to just be considered to do anything. I would love to be in kinky boots. Um, Cause you know I love old nasty ass boot. Okay. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, there's been a lot of people that has done that role that's been so iconic. So I would love to step into those boots and make them even kinkier. Okay. 
All right, we have a question right over here. Hi, y'all. Hi, Valentina. My name is Mauricio. Hi, Raja. I love you. Hey. I love both of you so much. Is there a celebrity that you want to collaborate with, whether that's here in Hollywood or there in Hollywood? We're not in Hollywood right now. Or internationally speaking on a project? Anyone you would love to work with. There are so many people that I would love to work with. One of my absolute idols. I've actually gotten an opportunity to um, do some work for her, but I have not met her just yet, but that's Diana Ross. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Diana Ross released a new CD and she let me premiere her first single. Thank love you. That. Congrats. Uh, so, like, after I did um, Diana Ross on the on All Star Six, her people reached out and they were like, "She loves you. She wants you to um, help promote her first track." So I was able to do that. But I would love to do something with Diana Ross, Brandy. I absolutely love Brandy. If you know me, I'm a Brandy head. Ooh, my is down. Um, Angela Bassett, I want to work with her. I want to play her daughter. I want to play her son. I want to play her cousin, a badass nephew, whatever. Okay. <laughs> uh, I really love Isabel Pantoja. I've never gotten to work with her um, or meet her yet. Um, and I really love Aida Cuevas and Shakira. I love Shakira so much. But when I talk about Shakira, I'm not talking about like the new one, but like what she was doing like way back when her hair was black and she was a little bit more rockery and writing all her songs. She was giving me very like Latina Alanis Morissette, sad girl on her guitar. And the way that she writes and speaks multiple languages and has done the crossover so successfully, an artist like her to be able to to even be known or, or considered to work with her would be an honor for me because to me she's like a, a mega star. Like, there's people that are stars, superstars, but to me she's like a mega star. Yeah. All right, ladies, we have one last question. Wait, I have, I have uh, one too. Oh, Wait. you have one too? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Here we go. Ooh. Hi, my name is Rudy. Hey. I'm such a big fan of RuPaul's Drag Race. I've been watching it for so long. My question is, how do you all feel about the editing on RuPaul's Drag Race. Is it true to the show? It's a TV show, so if they didn't edit it, what would it be? Boring <laughs> as fuck. Boring <laughs> as fuck. Oh, what would it be? I, I, I feel like a lot of girls like complain about their edit or complain or they just feel a certain type of way about their edits, but I feel fine with mine. <laughs> like I feel fine with mine like I just feel like if you're over here caught running your mouth and your feelings and they have it on the camera they're gonna put it on <laughs> so you know I think people are just really mad that they got caught saying what they thought <laughs> <laughs> well I will actually say a lot of people blame it on the edit because of the backlash that you guys give them it's not because of what was seen and what happened because as people we know the context in which these things happened. So when, say for instance, like the argument between Evie and I, I didn't go after Evie. I didn't attack her. She actually came at me and my entire group. So because I spoke up and I said, oh, I'm not having it. And then she wanted to go back and forth then it made it seem like I was the one that facilitated that. But it wasn't me. But y'all took it as that, and y'all loved Evie, so y'all ran with it, y'all hated me, y'all had told me to kill myself, do all the extras. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that's actually the reality of what the, like, yeah. the situation. So, I wouldn't blame it on the edit because I did give them the, the material because when they said, how do you feel about Evie? Bitch, she stank. I went in, but I didn't realize that they was gonna be like, oh, she went in. Oh, but she got some more. She got some more, and then they do the power edit of me saying, where you at, Miss Honey? Where you at? Where you at? And then I'm hugging these girls on the scene. So it's just kind of like, but it is what it is. It's great TV. We signed up to make TV, so it's okay. 
All right, we have one final question over here. Hi, this is my first time, and you're all beautiful, so I just wanted to say hey. that first. Thank you for Welcome giving to me Roscoe. all of this. Um, I think all of your hair is absolutely gorgeous, and I just wanted to know if, if you would share any tips with me about how you get like your long, gorgeous locks to look the way it does so that I could do it too. Girl, buy one from the store or have somebody customize you a unit. Add some heat, flat iron. It look, got to be glue spray to keep it on. <laughs> well, I think well we have some designers yeah, in the house. Like no, yeah. So my hair, my my hair, the last um, actually this whole season, all the wigs that I have put out, it's by my friend Josh Lubin. He's right over there. Ooh, and the I'm gonna give me one too. I'm gonna give you one. Um, uh, it, how does how, what's the Instagram handle? Fantasy or. Full fantasy wigs on Instagram. So if, um, yeah, check it out. Um, you can definitely purchase a little unit. Um, I can't tell you how to style it. You got to figure that shit on your own. Okay. <laughs> but yes, but uh, that's who does mine. So just in case you're uh, interested in that. What about you, Valentina? Thank you so much. Well, today, today my, my, my dear friend Robert, my new friend Robert, who I met through Naomi Smalls, came and did my hair. So it was a really amazing reference. And he... Added in some hair extensions, y'all. Some of my natural hair is blended in. But if I would give a tip, it would be, now that I've grown my hair out, I've been told by many hairstylists not to wash my hair every day. And so you want to keep the oils of your hair in there and you want to brush your hair so that you distribute the oils into your hair. And it's a little frustrating for me because I was used to like having my boy hair and like washing my scalp every day. And now like, now I go like every three days not washing my hair and it's a little frustrating, but it makes my hair a lot healthier. Mm -hmm. Girl, that is such a foreign concept to me. Cause hey, you bitch. know, as black people, we, we don't. We just throw on a fucking Ooh. wig, bitch. We, we like, <laughs> how you doing? We man? did not wash our hair every day. Yeah. I was like, wash your hair every day. That's too much. Ooh, it's too much. It's, it's gonna drain much. out the, the natural oils in your hair too, which are good for you. It's healthy. Ladies and gentlemen, did you have a good time tonight? <laughs> I want to remind you that next week we have Lady Camden, Jasmine Kennedy, and Daya Betty. Standing room only, only. available because yeah. it's sold out already. It's already sold out. So uh, standing room only available for next week. Uh, also, tonight we start our performances at 1030 with our lovely guests. Are you guys staying? Okay. And then I want to remind you guys that on Sunday... Sunday, we have Overdrive Pop Fusion Dance Party, hosted by Chloe Coulee. That's a lot of words every time. Hosted by Chloe Coulee. This one got me right here. With DJ Miss Twink USA. And performances by Auntie Chan, Circuit Mom, and Babby, Bambi Banks Coulee, starting at 9 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the lovely Raja Ohari and Valentina! Yay!